Welcome back to Never Drop Your Sword podcast, a podcast for the creatively courageous. This is part two of the Teresa Montes Theater Noir interview. How has being a mother changed your perspective on creating and creation in general? Oh my gosh, that is like a really good question. And it that totally reminds me that whenever I got pregnant with Johanna, I was like the happiest pregnant lady you've ever seen. Um, and people were like, other people were like, how can you be so happy? Like being pregnant, you're heavy, you're blah, blah, blah. You're, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're nauseous. You're, But to me, it was like the seed of creation was planted in me. And inside that seed of creation, the whole universe was stirring and making a planet, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. like that's how I felt inside of me. And yeah. that was like so miraculous. And I just felt like it was just like exuded from me. So whenever she came into physical being, I was like, wow, wow. such a miracle. And so that's how I've always seen her. And when she was small and I used to just see her as that miracle that you know, just came from source, created a, a universe that made like a planet <laughs> and then came through me like a portal, you know, then I was like, I, I told myself when she was young and I could see her that way that I was like, spirit, please help me to keep this vision in this mm -hmm. way with my daughter, right. you know? Right. And so as in anybody that you love closely you can hope that that love connection will give you um, an understanding of your love connection with everybody else, humanity, right? you yeah. know, and let it expand. That's beautiful. When we're able to see that in our own personal life, whether it's through your children, through your significant other, mm -hmm. in my case, you know, yeah, it was through Johanna to see it in such that miracle. That's beautiful. I, I love the way you put that. And like we were saying, it's it's um it's hard to find that perspective whenever, you know, your body is going through incredible change, you're you you're you might be nauseous, you might be sick, you might go through a lot of yeah. trouble <laughs> and, yeah. and, and raising and, and creating that inside your belly. But adversity creates great art. So it almost <laughs> kind of makes sense that having a child who is another light into this world would be so difficult, but it's beautiful for you to be able to see it that way. And what else about relationships has influenced your art? Oh, so much about relationships has always influenced my art. Um, I'm trying to think of something where I could even <laughs> begin with that. Um, you know, relationships like always influence art because it's just part of the journey as well right and learning how to love and learning how to like be unconditional in that love and still you know channel that love and that learning through what you're making right yeah. or you know maybe what you're going through you feel like you have to make a certain piece and it's part of your healing. Right. Yes. So. And then for music, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, Jet nor I really write very many love songs or, or breakup songs at all. I think we don't even have, we don't even have a breakup <laughs> song, but, but we, you know, our relationship and, and being in a long-term relationship, which we've been married for 10 years come this December, which is crazy. <laughs> it's not wild. Um, but it, it definitely sharpens you and pulls emotions out of you that, yes, you have to process mm -hmm. and you have to put it somewhere. There's and that's, a lot of learning involved. yeah, there's a lot of learning involved. And that's what's so beautiful about um, learning how to play an instrument, or I think in making something with your hands. Mm -hmm. I'm a very hands on person. Mm -hmm. And as I, you know, as things somewhat stabilize in my life, I'm able to kind of do some more like physical creating. But do you ever um, create out of anger or frustration or do you make yourself get into a very specific zone to make an article of clothing or to schedule? I'm more prone to 
if I have anger or frustration or something like that, I'm more prone to go for a walk, you know, right. or do something where I can get energy out in that way, you know, mm -hmm. because anyway, also what I find too is if I'm anger, angry or frustrated and then I start to make something, usually it calms me down immediately and right. my energy changes <laughs> anyway. Right. But sometimes, you know, if I'm, I'm feeling like one of those emotions that seem to be like dragging you down, mm -hmm. Oh, like I just try to get some exercise, do some stretching, get in a bath, do something nurturing for right. myself and really try to recognize where I need to give myself self-love yeah. and why I feel <laughs> Clancy, the <laughs> podcast dog, finds all kinds of unique things in your shop. Oh. <laughs> But those ears. I know. Those ears. Oh. <laughs> but that is that is very true about finding those those healthy habits. So what mm -hmm. are some non healthy habits that you have developed that you've really had to work out and stop? Um just over time is like especially being my own boss is keeping a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um you know, also setting up at, at venues and being at music venues and stuff a lot is, you know, not drinking too much alcohol, <laughs> not getting involved in too many, like, strange emotional states with myself mm -hmm. and others. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. You know, so those kind of things. Those, yeah. You know. And, and so tell me about some of the healthy habits that you do on the regular, weekly or daily, that that keeps those non-healthy habits at bay? Um, I do a lot of stuff. So um, I like to do, to keep a little more balance in my life, I use a lot of essential oils <laughs> nice. because essential oils help, help raise your vibration and your mm -hmm. frequency. I mean, if there was smell-o-vision, <laughs> right. would feel the smell mm -hmm. of the essential oils I have on today. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But I also, um, I like to walk. I do breathing techniques, meditation over the years. You know, I've just like learned a lot of different techniques in order to like help keep my stability and stuff. And also just like diving in deep into yourself and looking at your own muck that needs <laughs> to be looked at. Right. You know, but remembering also through the muck, that's where the lotus flower gets in there yeah, deep right. and turns into a beautiful bloom. Right. So, um, compassion. And compassion, yeah. Self -compassion, for yourself. Self-compassion. Yeah. Compassion for, for others. others. Yeah. Yeah. And um, kindness and, you know, at the same time, taking care of my body, my diet, mm -hmm. um, following your own intuition on what you feel you need. I do a lot of uh, neo-Native American ceremonial type stuff okay. that keeps me balanced. Can you tell lodges. us about some of those? Um, I do sweat lodges. Okay, nice. Know, yeah. On a pretty regular basis. I am um, also an apprentice for uh, being a, a pipe carrier. Oh, nice. You know, mm -hmm. and so um, I also do vision quests. And I'm on my fourth year this year. Nice. In September. Um, we were talking about the neo Native American, American ceremonial stuff that I do. And so that brings me a lot of peace. Whenever I do a vision quest, um, I'll tell you just like a little bit about that. Yeah. I get into like a space where I'm going to be out in nature, you know, without amenities and stuff and be able to pray for three days straight for anything mm -hmm. and everybody and everything <laughs> that I ever want to pray for. And it's such a blessing. And it has its own um, difficulties as well. I mean, you get thirsty, mm -hmm. but when you're thirsty, you pray and you remember that you're there to um, to say a prayer. And so is it, to, you do a fast with it too? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's fasting, it's, it's sweat lodging before, it's, it's a lot of prepping before you go up there and stuff and mm -hmm. some people do it without prepping but i'm doing it in a certain way in a certain yeah yeah, yeah. and That's so cool. um and it's been a total blessing and i feel like i've i've received tons of blessings from oh, from yeah. doing it and 
I've also learned how to pray in a way that is in a state of gratitude. So even if I like have, um, you know, what I may think is lack in my life, I'm still going to be grateful for it and see it as something that has been given to me in this way so I can learn something from it. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. And so, and I, I feel like that in itself and praying in that way shifts your energy and, yeah, you know, it does opens the door to create. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, getting that time alone is really important, free from the distractions, especially since, like we said earlier, you're putting so much of yourself into your art that you really want it to be able to bless and change people I at least do. i do you know i know yeah. you do you know and and whether that's just for them to have something fun to to wear to listen mm -hmm. to make doesn't it doesn't have simple. to make it simple it they doesn't always dive into right dive yeah exactly into. <laughs> they don't have to make it complicated it's not like mm -hmm. they're putting on some kind of mantle of stuff it's just that the the intention that you create out of is so important and i love i love hearing about your just some of your methods on how you can like free your mind get into that space do you do this every year or multiple times a year the vision um, quests i've been doing this i do it once a year the actual vision quest i do it once a year usually at the end of september um because it's the best time to be like outside and in that type of space that's like safe not too hot not too cold right you know, right yeah better well, because you know clancy what do you have <laughs> what's on the toy <laughs> oh, leave. what are you doing with that that's not yours and so once a year once a year mm -hmm. wow that's awesome that's cool i think that that's so important especially as you you know think and plan through your year i don't really like to do um that at the beginning of the year at all usually it is kind of more in the summer is my reset as well or mm -hmm. spring and i'll have usually it takes about two weeks i'm kind of a slow maybe that's kind of my prep time plus the the quiet time i'll have about two weeks where you know all devices are off and it's all about finding something to do with my hands which mm -hmm. usually frees my mind and being outside and, and doing with that and then spending time in prayer. So that's, I think it's very essential. And I'm glad you have that. And everyone Thankful. should, <laughs> yeah, everyone should figure out a way to get some alone time and some meditation time, especially if you're an artist. That is awesome. So, well, we've covered a lot here. This is great. So I just have a couple more questions left. Okay. And so let's talk a little bit about, because on the YouTube video for listeners, they won't get to see your shop, but they can go to our YouTube channel and check out your shop. Um, where we'll have links to where can they find you? Where can they find your pieces? I am here in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, Rio de Janeiro, Mexico. Theater Noir mm -hmm. at two one one seven Sutter Drive mm -hmm. in the Gazebo Shopping Center, nice. number three. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I am also on Instagram under Theater Noir. Nice. I am also on Facebook under um, my business page, which is Theater Noir, Head to Toe Stylization. Okay. And then I am both on Instagram and Facebook under Teresa Montes. Okay. And um, my Facebook page um, is open to the mm -hmm. public. My Instagram personal page is private only. Right. And so if you want to be my friend please message me and <laughs> right let yeah me know who you are and i will you know accept friend requests it's okay. hard to keep that clean from a bunch of right. garbage yeah no it's, it's very true <laughs> so so we can find you on instagram um theater noir and we'll have all those links in, in the descriptions for the youtube video and the podcast so people can check okay, out so and cool. get your one-of-a-kind pieces and you post pictures of what you have for sale and also you go to festivals. Do you know what festivals or, or fairs you'll be going to this year? I do yeah. have a couple of festivals set up so far. Um, I am going to be at the Ridoso Tattoo Expo. That's so exciting. Yeah. Our first excited. annual. Yeah. And it's going to be so big. And there's people coming from all over the country and possibly all over the world. So Ooh. I'm super excited about that. And I'm also going to be setting up in Madrid at the Blues Festival nice. this coming season. And I just applied for um, 
It's a little smoke sesh festival that they're having down in Thule coming up in a couple of months. Okay. Yeah, wow. in Tula Rosso, and uh, they're going to have live music mm-hmm. and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, and, nice. You know. That's the best place to find you because you're in your element, and you've got your beautiful tent set up, which I'm excited to see your new tent. Oh, <laughs> and and also, you people can come and try on the clothes and, and immediately put them to use on the dance floor or in front of the stage, oh, which I is my that. favorite. <laughs> That's my that. favorite yeah. part. So some of your inspirations are multicultural are kind of multi-ethnic what what kind of led to that your travels um yeah a lot of stuff um because i um have been studying the spiritual path so long Mm -hmm. i mean i do have to say that my multicultural spiritual endeavors have definitely inspired me a lot um You know, and I am inspired by fashion these days, but I tend to not want to be in the stream of what's happening fashion-wise because I just want to go with my own intuition and my own flow. But um, just, I mean, there's such beautiful multicultural spiritual things like all over the world and all (laughs) over the country. And it always happens to be like the spiritual items or paintings that are like so beautifully embellished and then to go to that country like right. india and see those people dress like that yeah. on the regular is it. like amazing right you know yeah in the himalayas and in you know different countries all over the world and stuff yeah. it's just so inspiring and of course all kinds of other artists have been so inspiring to me right. yeah as well as well yeah, yeah definitely and we'll be excited to show the folks on youtube you know what your pieces look like they're unique upcycled and recycled right as upcycled, well or just mostly? recycled reinvented <laughs> Re- completely remade yeah, yeah sometimes i start from scratch sometimes i start from a piece that's already been made sometimes it's like a vintage piece mm-hmm. you'll take all kinds of pieces and reinvent them and you you work with a variety of fabrics and materials, bone, yeah. wood, feathers, velvet, lace, all yeah. of that. And do you how do you collect some of the items that you find? Don't if you me? only saw my collection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful. Um, over time, I just um, I mean because I've traveled so much, you know, not only within the united states but out of country then i like will find little collections of stuff i mean i have vintage saris i have keys and vintage doorknobs and clock parts and bones and skulls and (laughs) horns and you know a little bit of everything different types of fur and stuff and to me it's like okay i find that at a thrift store and antique or a yard sale people gift it to me because they know i'm going to recycle it right so here it goes in a bin stacking up and stacking <laughs> up and then i go to make something and it's like oh i don't even have to buy anything i have fur i can cut it apart yep. i can make something and so i kind of that's the thing about me because people are like, well, why don't you just design something and send it off to somebody where well, they can, can re- replicate it. And right. Stuff. And it's because usually these pieces make themselves. Mm. I have to, I can start the base of the piece. Like say, if I'm starting something from scratch, I can start the base of the piece, mm-hmm. but then I'm like, well, I want to get into my vintage doilies because that's going to be a pocket. Right. Or I have to go look for my pieces of leather, fur, <laughs> chains, <laughs> all that stuff, yeah. Bone, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, you know. That's awesome. I love that. I I love your pieces. As you know, I own quite a few. <laughs> Thank Which you. is awesome. Well, I have one last question. Okay. And it is what's the one thing in art that we aren't talking about or exploring, but we really should be? I definitely have to go back to to feeling like I would say spirituality hmm. just because um, I don't 
think that it's a subject that's talked about enough, mm -hmm. you know, and if we could kind of enter that concept with creativity and talk about it more in circles, I think that we could all benefit each other a lot mm -hmm. more, you know, right. because it's, it's, you know, people think about fashion and they're thinking, oh, it's this very materialistic type of right. thing. But little does anybody know, except for now that she's had this interview with me, that it's, that's not what's primarily important to me. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I express what, you know, I have going on inside Side, yeah. of me. And so I just feel like that could be understood more. Right. No, I know. Agree. I agree. And so, and I think that we can all help each other in that way because you know what's happening in this world today so mm -hmm. you know cool. now i'm starting to sound like that <laughs> 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 what is it called miss universe this, yeah yeah miss universe oh the, the whole world peace <laughs> oh man that's but it's funny true, you yeah know. so because we really need it desperately we do we do day and age we need some grounding and I think art can pave the way for that mm -hmm. because right now art is being so shut down by algorithms or by if you have enough money you can do what you need to do or if you make enough money or virality or these certain strange gates that really haven't quite been in the way before and it's it's creating this very unique maze that we have to navigate through, but that just puts our creative brain to work. <laughs> yeah, and so I think that it's just really important to have self-realization. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as Leos, I mean, <laughs> you know, people maybe for a while thought, well, God, that's really selfish, but it's not selfish. It's like doing something for yourself so that what you express to the world can make a bigger impact. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So. I agree with that. Well, Teresa, Thank you Thanks. so much. Aww. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening to part two of the interview with Teresa. It just felt right to give each other a hug. <laughs> I had such a beautiful and inspiring conversation with her. She is a genuine human being, and I hope that you'll check out her art. Links are below to find her Instagram and Facebook page. Please reach out to her and let her know what you think of her art and her interview. Give her some encouragement, support local and small business. And please, you've heard what we have to say. Do you agree with Teresa about we need to bring more spirituality back into art? Agree? Disagree? Leave a comment below. Thank you so much. I upload every Wednesday. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe and stay courageous.